Greeting Earthlings, if you follow the channel, you know that we love all things Apollo, and that during our last visit to Steve Gervetson's amazing space collection, we were given the opportunity to take two holy boxes of Apollo electronics to our lab. These are the boxes that brought you voice, data and live TV from the moon. Over the previous episodes, we got them running and we now have a solid Apollo microwave link running between the transponder and the original NASA ground test equipment. Then we got more help from another collector, our friend Marcel, who gave us the many other boxes that complete this complicated system. We are now focusing our attention on bringing them up and first in line is the pre-modulation processor, or PMP. It is the central node in the system and every signal gets connected through it. Voice up, voice down, command up, telemetry, the flight recorder, TV, LEM relay and more. In fact, it is so complicated that it took us the entire previous episode to go over its functionality and identify all the connections. We are now at a point where we can attempt to power it up. The most challenging aspect is the very high number of control lines that have to be set up to make it work. No wonder, as it took a whole panel section of switches to interact with it. So for this initial power-up, we are going to first go for a minimum setup to do the main checks. Mike, which one is that? This is the power supply module for the PMP. It takes in 28, puts out 18 volts for the rest of the modules and for external switches to control. So that's a switcher, you tell me? So we yep. just, yeah, we just go, right? We put the load on it. We go? Yeah. Nothing. Hmm. Okay, try again. Okay, trying again. There we go. Okay, so as, as our scope probe was not put all the way. 18 volts, point oh! All not right. Bad. And okay, so it. Nothing blue, except our ego when we didn't get it right <laughs> the first time. Okay, so first step, as usual, is good. The power supplies are just right where they should be. And we look at the AC and it's very, very quiet supply. We're at five millivolt per division. And I don't, I don't believe the low frequency stuff is from the supply, I think it's from the lab. Yeah. I think it's the Wi-Fi. That's just it's, random. It's random. Do you want to try the uh, auxiliary power supply? Uh, of course, of course. There, yeah, that's true. There's two power supplies, right? Yep. Is, is that why there are two transistors? There's just yeah, it's it's duplicated across halves of the module here. So two power transistors, bunch of stuff. Uh, can you flip it around again so we can see the? So th at the back, the very back, I suppose that's the relay. Yeah. That, that that chooses one or the other power mm -hmm. supply. We just counted the transistors. There is three here, three here, one there. So it's seven per power supply. And there's two of them. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> just change the pin. Just change the pin. And comes through the same wire because the relay will switch it. Yes. 18 point. Oh, two. Oh, even even better. better. Okay. All right. So. Both primary and auxiliary power supply work. Nice. Very good. So Mike has put back the PMP together and we are doing some wiring to it. What we are trying to do is, it, so it's a complicated animal. It connects to just about everything. So I am trying to see if we could get uh, some of the subcarriers, there is one for voice, there is one for uh, data on the PM, there is one for data on FM, and there's a few for uh, analog uh, scientific data. 
And to turn them on, we have to turn all those wires. So right now, I think I have voice in. Actually, I don't have voice in. I just have the switch to voice. And then I hope to see the subcarrier at 1.25 megahertz. And for that, I should only need, where is it? 512 kilohertz and not this one. Because that one is for data. It's buried in there. There it is, the 512 kilohertz for voice. Over here, sorry, Mike. I have frequency 512 kilohertz. Actually, I have already, I have it already wired up to the two inputs, and then I am looking the output, the small yellow wire to the oscilloscope. Is one to two megahertz it's fairly low frequency and that should give me a subcarrier and mike you've wired it so you have power and the green wire is the voice yeah the voice wire the voice uh, switch <laughs> so one side of the green wire goes to the 18 volt output from the pmp and then we're looping it back around into the switch input yeah then that, that's how it's supposed to work actually the pmp gives its own reference signals if you survived the last episode, we are looking at the PM downlink output, and if everything works according to plan, we should see two subcarriers. I'm trying to first turn on the green one for voice at 1.25 MHz, and in a second step, the blue one for data at 1.024 MHz. Uh, and the hope is that we have gotten our wire correctly and so we turn it on and see if 1.25 megahertz appears. Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Want to try it? Oh boy. Yeah. Like, that's the simplest test we could imagine. It's quite complicated. So well, give it, give it a, a quick on and uh, just watch the current that it doesn't go into. Okay, 190 milliamps, no output though. What did I do wrong? Oh, I know why. I don't have the... Uh, do it again. I didn't have the output yet. And of course, I forgot to turn on the 512 kilohertz reference input, which I had dutifully pointed out in the last episode. It's easier to see here the red 512 kHz wire from the CTE. Nothing works if there is no reference signal. Okay, on. And then, so, yeah. Oh, oh. All right, so we see, oh, I have the two carriers. So I have the 1.25, I'm right on it. So we have one subcarrier, but I have, it looks like I have the second one, I have the data one too. And I thought we did not turn that one on yet, but I think we did. So that's 1.25 and I bet you the other one is 1.024. Yeah, 1.022. Huh, okay, so we have voice and data subcarriers. Okay, we think there's another quick experiment we can do is check FM. Once again, a traumatic flashback from the previous killer episode. We are now looking at the FM downlink output. And there it's more complicated. I should see a blue 1.024 MHz carrier for the data playback from tape. There should be nothing yet in the middle for the voice playback, but we should get the three green scientific channels. Maybe, perhaps, we hope. It's a fairly 2C connector. R S T U V. W X Y Z. So Mike thinks he has found the pin that turns off the FM channel. So on the FM channel, they sent the recorded data and also the scientific data. So we should have a whole bunch of sub carriers for the scientific analog signals and I have to switch myself from from PM to FM. Okay, 
Um, yeah, I have signal in, so I should be good to go. Alright. So I should get 1024 megahertz and then little subcarriers that are the analog channels, scientific channels. Want to go for it? Alright, here we go. Whoa! Ah, that's a signal. <laughs> these are these are my analog carriers, my three analog carriers. So what I have here, I'm not sure. Wow. Um, so we have 1.024. That's correct. I should have my 100 kilohertz ish. Yeah, that's it. 150, 100. Is that intermodulating somehow? 200. 95 kilohertz 125 kilohertz and 165 kilohertz and I think those are the three subcarriers but they are very really yes yes 95 125 and 165 kilohertz that's what it says so we see our side data subcarriers I also have the 1.024 MHz data subcarrier. However, I see a lot of extraneous peaks, so the jury is still out on this one. Are they supposed to be there? Did we not turn the controls properly? Uh, but I have a lot of garbage in base band and I have a lot of stuff in the upper band too. Normal, so I see them here, but I see them mirrored over here. Which I don't quite understand. Pull your wire out. Does it disappear? Alright, I'm gonna take off the 18 volts. Yep. So we were tickling the right pins and doing the right thing. Uh, but but th these modes are complicated. So until we redo the whole control panel, because uh, there are several things you are supposed to toggle at the same time, we yeah. probably won't know. Okay, so far so good. We have FM, we have PM. We were just looking at the schematics because I don't think we turned on the PM correctly. Uh, we saw the two signals, but looking at the footage, it was minus 40 or 50 dB. Right. And they, uh, I think they, are, they were gated behind amplifier and we confirmed that. So it turns out you have to enable a pair of the purple or one pick or one peach. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's try to add one more of those lines and see if we can get it ungated right. and get our signal. Mike, you have put the additional wires? Yes, just one additional wire for now. Uh, I wired this one into PMP off. PMP off, so we should have voice only. We should have 1.025. Uh, well, we just turn it on, I guess, right? Yeah. You want to press the button? Alright, here we go. And... Oh, oh I wait. need to plug it in. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's not me. Last time I forgot to get the signal out. Yeah. Alright, try it again. Alright. Oh, yeah, there you go. Zero dBm puff right there. Okay, so that's what was wrong. And I bet you if you pull that wire, it's going to go away. Uh, hold on, hold on, don't pull it on yet. <laughs> I'm going to figure out if it's the right signal, m normal. Yeah, we have minus 1.8 dBm at 1.248 megahertz. That's yes. correct. So, we did it right. You want to change your pen to uh, do PCM plus voice? So, instead of PP, I need a little I got it. The, the letters printed on the connector are very tiny. I think that's okay, so okay, I'm still on. I'm still 512 kilohertz, three volts. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. 
we see we see the same thing that as to, as we have on the other one. There's a lot of cross modulation. Interesting. They push the voice up to 1.3 dBm. Huh. And here is the data. 1.020. So that's correct. I give. So that's very similar to the the other the FM channel where we saw a lot of interaction cross products between all the frequencies. Hmm. It has so many inputs, so many outputs, so many switch, so many switching. And it's all interconnected and entangled. <laughs> right. So we figured out that, okay, now we have to redo the uh, few rows of switches. They are all at the bottom right of the control panel. And so we went there to find out what switches did they use, right? because they are very uh, annoying. There are three position multiple uh, switches, which is not easy to find. Three pull, three throw. <laughs> and uh, Mike, uh, of course, was able to get us a drawing. He is firstly looking for it. Yeah. And Eric, you say, oh, I have some in my collection. Right. The switch in the drawing looked really familiar. And so I went back home and I dug around in my one of my many boxes of switches. And so you brought your collection of switches. And uh, they are basically identical to each other with the difference of the uh, actuator. Yeah, very similar. And uh, it's actually, if you turn it this way, you can see how it matches. So it's made with a collection of hermetic switches, the, the same that we found on, on the ground switches, like on some of the ground switches. Mm -hmm. And you can stack them however way you want. Can you, uh, they are delicious to operate. Can you operate one? Oh, yeah. Click. Click. Keep doing it because I didn't focus right. Most of these are three position, three throws. And in order to do that, there is no such thing as a three position, three throw switch. You use dual position, dual throw with on, on, on lever. <laughs> and so you, with, with two dual throws, you make one triple throw. That's basically what, what happens. And uh, this is still how it's made today. You can't find those switches. They're still made by Honeywell, right? Right, yeah. You can buy them brand new. Yes, and it was a mere five hundred dollars a piece, or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. There's so here's the two pole version, I think. Yeah, that's a cheap pole. It's like yeah. three hundred and something. Oh, two hundred ninety-two. Hey, affordable. I guess it's, they are still used for avionics or something like that. Yeah. And so we decided, uh, unfortunately, we're not going to reuse these to make uh, our rows of switches. But I found some more reasonably priced, they were still expensive on, on eBay, that we are going to be able to make uh, our panel for. And after we've done that, then we can test the PMP. Eric here has uh, gotten the short straw. But just this little section down here, all those switches. Yeah, you're reproducing the schematics that was behind the things. Yep. So here we are, lots of wires, lots of switches. Since then, Eric has been hard at work and has almost finished the control panel we need to properly hook up the PMP. We'll then try to make them in the new grey color that our PCB sponsor PCBWay has just introduced. So stay tuned for the next episode.